So yeah, let's start. Hi everyone, I am uh, Sumaya, and today I want to talk about uh, Web3 with the Angular. Uh, and in particular, I want to bring my uh, experience with Web3 uh, because it wasn't an easy one. It was really tough. It was a nightmare. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you the, my story with, the, with it and uh, maybe it can be helpful if uh, one day you will have to uh, start with Web3, uh, in particular with Angular. So uh, let's introduce myself first. I am a lead software developer in a startup in Brescia that is uh, called uh, Scaling Parrots. Uh, they are specialized like, in blockchain development, of course. And uh, so when I started with them, I was just about Web3, and uh, uh, yeah, this is mostly what I'm focused on, uh, actually, uh, on the front end and uh, with Angular in particular. But before that, my experience with Angular was a little bit uh, good, I think. <laughs> And uh, I had uh, so many experience with uh, um, a multiple uh, amount of projects. So I was confident about Angular. And when uh, last year I entered in Scaling Pirates, this company that I mean, and they like was all about blockchain. I didn't know anything about blockchain, actually. The only thing that uh, it was in my mind when the when I read uh, blockchain was Bitcoin. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know anything and it was uh, really exciting because uh, like we, we, say, we say, like uh, developers like uh, uh, love to um, learn something new every time we change like job or uh, after uh, a, a time on the same um, technology. So I was excited to start with, uh, with uh, uh, the blockchain and to start learning something. But it wasn't easy. So when I started with Web3, it was a kick in the face. <laughs> so all my excitement is starting to slow down and uh, what I wanted to do is just take my experience with Angular and uh, add the web tree and it will work fine. <laughs> but it wasn't like that. So uh, what I found, because like uh, as a developer, when we start with something new, we just go on Google and uh, look for like uh, Angular plus uh, web tree or Angular depths. And what I found was like React everywhere. No one was uh, talking about Angular, and I still don't know how, why. And if you know, just uh, let me know. <laughs> and a uh, really lack of documentation. There wasn't documentation um, on the internet. Now you can find something because it's improving. I'm talking about like one year ago. But it's moving fast, so you can find something now, but it's really a, a little bit. And I, I was looking for some libraries on NPM with Angular, Depths, Angular with Web3, and what I found is just libraries from four months uh, earlier, and that doesn't work. So I was just exhausted because in, uh, in the company that I work, they just use React because they told me like, uh, we wanted to, to start with Angular, but we don't know how to do this. So we just use React. But after some months, because I love Angular, so <laughs> I was like bored to work on React. So I just, <laughs> was thinking, if it doesn't exist, I will do it. Because I, uh, if I can't read something, I want it even more. So uh, I just focused on trying to uh, uh, achieve these, these awards. So I was starting 
making comparison between uh, what we used to uh, work with in the Web 2, what we know has Web 2, and the Web 3. So, in Web 2, we are used like to have everything in our web server. So, we have the front end, the back end, and the database, of course, all in the web. So, we just communicate between them. Uh, you ask the, the back end, and this. Uh, respond with uh, the data that you need. The difference between uh, the two is in Web3, we don't have the backend anymore. Uh, we just have the front end that speaks directly with the blockchain. Of course, we are talking about Ethereum uh, virtual machine compatible blockchains because uh, when we speak with the blockchain, we speak directly with smart contracts, and smart contracts we can only uh, write them in the Ethereum virtual machine compatible blockchains, like Ethereum, of course, uh, but there is also Binance, uh, Algorand, Polygon, uh, and many others, very valid blockchains that are most used. What we need to talk with this blockchain, because we cannot like talk directly, we just need a provider a provider that can be um, directly our wallet. We n all know what MetaMask is, so uh, the wallet uh, just give us a provider inside so we can use that, and this is the simple thing that we, we can do. Or we can like use like Infura or QuickNode are the most popular. Uh, Infura has some nodes that are free, and we love free stuff, so uh, we can use that. Quick note, it uh, needs uh, some expense, but if you want something uh, quick and uh, that works fine every, every time, you, you have to pay something. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, the cool thing is that you have MetaMask as a signer, so the authentication in this case can be only used with uh, your uh, uh, wallet, so you interface the, the blockchain not as, like me, I am Sumaya, I am in the blockchain. No, we uh, interface uh, by our wallet, so we have an address, and this is our trace in the blockchain. So, for the communication, in Web2, we have REST API, so when we want to talk with the, the backend, we use the REST APIs. In Web3, we have the ABI. Uh, the ABIs are just an interface that allows us to uh, communicate with the smart contracts. Uh, so uh, inside, it's just uh, uh, parts of the uh, Solidity code. So every uh, function that uh, uh, it's written in this, this Solidity code it's just translated into an array of ABIs that are like object with um, all the function that we can call. So in this case, uh, the name is deposit. So the function name, the method that we are, uh, we are going to call is deposit. And it has inputs and outputs. So the inputs are all the arguments that uh, we are. Um, we need to pass to the this function to uh, uh, reach the the results and the output is of course what it returns to us. So it's pretty simple. And for Web two, we have Swagger or Postman or whatever you will want to use to try out like uh, the the APIs before uh, implementing them in your code. And in Web3, we have the explorers. In this case, it's Etherscan, but uh, there is an explorer for every blockchain. And you have this section contract when you have a read and write contract. The code, you have all the Solidity code, and also the ABIs, you can find it in the code section. We have read and write because in blockchain, you cannot like delete or edit anything, so you just can uh, write something new, and uh, everything is like 
clear to everyone and you cannot, uh, it's immutable. So um, we can read stuff from them and here you can try, try it on and also in the right section, you can try it on uh, before implementing it in your code. In Web2, we have a, a communication client server um, via HTTP. In Web3, we have ethers.js. Ethers.js is our best friend in uh, Web3 uh, development. So uh, it's JS, so it doesn't matter if you are using Angular or React or whatever. Uh, it works, even in Angular. I use it every day, and uh, it's perfect. So to start uh, building a, a, yeah, our app, we need uh, to focus on three simple things. If you know this, you can build whatever you want, I think. So uh, first of all, uh, the wallet interaction. So how I implement the wallet connection. So when I click the button um, connect wallet, it will like open MetaMask or whatever you want to use. Um, how to read to make a read in, uh, from the smart contract and a write, of course. So the wallet, from the wallet we have three things that we need from the, from, from the wallet and that is provided to us. The first thing is the provider. As we said, it's important like, to have like, uh, uh, the possibility to um, uh, interact with the, the blockchain, the, with the smart contracts. The wallet address, because it's our ID in uh, the blockchain world, and the network, which is um, connected our um, wallet. The most important um, used uh, wallets are MetaMask, Wallet Connect. I added also uh, Binance Wallet because uh, Binance Wallet and MetaMask are uh, just browser extensions, so you can use it on your laptop. And uh, directly in the browser, you have uh, these two you can install and use. Wallet Connect is more like a provider that uh, just uh, gives you a QR code. You can scan it with your favorite wallet from your phone, and you can use whatever you want. Uh, so it's like more easy to, to implement. So uh, how we get the provider? For the first two, the MetaMask and Binance, uh, we have it directly in the window object. So we just uh, get Ethereum for MetaMask and Binance Chain for Binance, of course. Uh, with Wallet Connect, we have to install um, uh, a library that is Wallet Connect provider, and we just create a new uh, provider uh, with uh, simple information like the Infure ID and uh, the network that we want to connect with. Uh, we want to interact with Ether, so we need to speak their language. So uh, we need to. Um, translate our uh, provider from earlier to a Web3 provider that eaters can uh, know and can use. So we need this uh, new Web3 provider and is uh, what, uh, what eaters can, can read. They need like connection. It's MetaMask in this example. Um, they have all the uh, provider um, informations here and the network that uh, we are connected to. Uh, so they bring the information that they want and uh, so it, it, uh, they can like reuse it. In this case, uh, to uh, get the address of uh, our wallet, that's it's, it's important, um, it's just an enable from the Web3 provider that return its connect the, um, the wallet to our application and uh, give us back the address. 
uh, it's enabled for the three of them, but with MetaMask, uh, there is a good documentation about MetaMask, uh, and uh, with uh, Ethereum request accounts, you can um, have directly the, um, the addresses, so I wanted to uh, specific this because they have more, uh, uh, more method that you can use. It's addresses because um, you get an array of uh, address, so uh, in this case it's just one, but it's an array of addresses. For the network, it's just get network, and as we said, we have the chain ID, the name, uh, this is uh, Ethereum name service address, it's not Ethereum in this case, so we just don't have anything. Interaction with smart contract, uh, we have the read and the write uh, are pretty similar. Uh, I just used to make like a service um, for the read and one for the write. Uh, the only difference is be uh, between them is the uh, provider that you use, because for the read, um, I just use a specific uh, RPC that uh, we need for that read. Um, but in the uh, right um, from the smart contract, the provider needs to be the wallet provider. You cannot use a public one because um, this, the, um, the user needs to approve that transaction. So, um, so this is my um, best uh, choice of uh, uh, service. Uh, Sometimes I just start, I started to do a library and I uh, just uh, use this as a service in every project that I made, Web3 project, of course. And uh, because we just need like the contract address that we want to read from, uh, the RPC provider, in this case, the ABIs, uh, the method name that I want to call, and the arguments. The arguments, it's optional because not every um, method needs, uh, needs inputs, so uh, if they have ones, uh, you can pass it or, uh, or not. And then you just, uh, in this case, you get a new uh, provider from the RPC, so the, the URL that we are passing, and then create a new contract that uh, Ethers like, uh, with the contract address, the ABI, and the provider, and with this contract, I call it contract manager, um, you just pass the method name and the arguments if you have it, and uh, you get your return. So, I just, a uh, quick example. Um, in this case, I'm reading the boost balance uh, on uh, BNB chain, Binance. Um, and I'm passing this is the uh, address of the smart contract of Boost. Uh, this is the RPC of Binance, the public one, uh, so everyone can use it. The RC20 ABI are just the standard ABI for tokens. And I'm uh, reading the balance of and passing my uh, address account. And what we get, it's a big number because smart contracts really like big numbers. Uh, so we get the big number, and then I just translate it in a number that we can read. This is the ABIs, by the way, uh, Binance of. Uh, it's the name, input, it requires the owner address, and it's the output, it's balance, um, that is a uint 256, that is a big number. And this is the result. Uh, we have the big number, and this is the number that we get. I double-checked with the Explorer, and uh, I'm passing my address account, and same response, so I think that I did it well. <laughs> uh, for the right, um, as I said, it's the same, just missing the RPC provider because we just take the wallet provide one, um, provider one that uh, we create earlier. And the same thing, we just 
pass the method name. In this case, I made, uh, as an example, um, an approve. So I'm passing uh, the spender and the amount. The amount, we cannot pass it as a number as we know it. Uh, we have to check the decimals of this token. In this case, we have uh, 18 decimals, so we have to uh, transform the amount in big number and multiply it from uh, with, uh, for 10 power uh, 18 in this case. So um, this is the, the numbers that uh, the smart contracts uh, need that can read. Uh, so in this case, I'm passing the same uh, smart contract address, that is boost one, uh, the same ABIs, then the method name, it's approved, and it needs the spender, so who we want to spend our tokens, and the amount. This is the ABIs, just making an example, and you get the pop-up from MetaMask that get, gives you like some uh, details where uh, the amount that we want to approve is 10 boosts. Uh, guaranteed to is the uh, person that we want to use our tokens. We get the fees that we have to pay because for every transaction in blockchain, we need to pay something to do it. And you can confirm or reject and uh, it just uh, translate. I have a demo for you, and uh, you can find it in uh, my GitHub repository. It's not private anymore, so you can uh, check it if you want, and you can just contribute or give me some uh, opinion or uh, uh, code with me if you want. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>